Dams are some of the world's most impressive feats of engineering. In the United States alone, there are over 90,000 dams that produce electricity, manage flooding, and provide water to nearby communities. However, there's a significant issue with dams that is often overlooked. They negatively impact fish populations and water quality in rivers. After over a decade of debates over money, ecology, and salmon, U.S. officials have finally called for a drastic move, the demolition of four iconic dams in California. This initiative is regarded as the largest dam removal project in American history, and it is even billed as the world's largest dam demolition megaproject. Today, let's explore the reasons for dismantling these dams and the intriguing details of the demolition process that is currently underway. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The Klamath River, coursing through Oregon and California, hosts a series of hydroelectric dams constructed over a 250-mile span. For over a century, the river's flow has been harnessed to generate electricity, powering approximately 70,000 households and providing irrigation water for nearby farmers. However, Rather than expanding these dams to boost energy production and agricultural support, local authorities are now embarking on the most extensive dam removal endeavor in U.S. history. Soon, all these dams will be dismantled. While it may appear counterintuitive to eliminate a renewable energy source, especially amid a global transition away from fossil fuels, there are compelling reasons for their removal. To grasp why these dams are slated for removal, it's necessary to delve deeper into the origins of the climate's issues and its operational dynamics. Dams such as those along the Klamath operate by impeding the natural flow of water, typically by creating a reservoir or lake. This detained water is then channeled through massive pipes within the dam, exerting pressure on turbines. These turbines in turn, rotate generators, thereby generating a consistent and environmentally friendly source of electricity. Erected between 1918 and 1967, the four dams on the Klamath were specifically constructed by the Pacificorp Klamath Hydroelectric Project for this precise purpose. The objective was to erect seven earth and rock-filled dams to illuminate towns and provide power for the agricultural, mining, and milling endeavors of Northern California and Oregon. Throughout a span of several decades, the East Side, West Side, J.C. Boyle, Copco 1, Copco 2, Fall Creek, and Iron Gate hydroelectric plants were erected, effectively obstructing the flow of the Klamath River. The Iron Gate Dam stands as the tallest and most ambitious of them. Originally, the intention was for these dams to offer both clean energy and preserve the natural beauty of the Klamath River. With the hydroelectric project encompassing approximately 20 recreational sites along its course. Additionally, the dams facilitated the diversion of water from the Klamath to provide irrigation for fields tended by local farmers. Despite their contributions in electricity generation and irrigation supply, the dams were not without their drawbacks. The situation becomes rather awkward when considering that the river once boasted natural biodiversity before the dams were erected, with these structures occupying land revered and inhabited by Native American tribes. Today the Klamath River drains its water from a worryingly drought-stricken basin which covers Oregon and California. A significant consequence of dam construction was the elevation of water temperatures in the Klamath and the introduction of fertilizer runoff into the stagnant waters fostering extensive algae blooms in the river. While initially overlooked, the presence of algae in the river posed a significant threat due to the toxins and bacteria it emitted, proving fatal to salmon populations on numerous occasions. In 2002, the situation reached a critical point, with an estimated 68,000 salmon in the Klamath succumbing to these conditions. The dams also disrupted the natural migration patterns of salmon, hindering their ability to reproduce. This disruption has had profound repercussions for indigenous communities whose traditional reliance on the river for sustenance and livelihoods spans millennia. Efforts by local authorities to address the issue include the cessation of irrigation channels to allocate more water for salmon, 
Yet this action inadvertently disrupted the livelihoods of farmers and ranchers. In response, public outcry manifested in protests, with citizens passing buckets of water to revive dried up irrigation canals until the government intervened to redirect more water to the region. Consequently, the presence of dams has sparked controversy, prompting years of advocacy from indigenous and environmental groups for their removal. After years of contention and activism, the dam owners eventually conceded to the necessity of their removal and initiated restoration efforts along the river. The pivotal moment came with the announcement of the Klamath Basin Restoration Agreement in 2010, aiming to find a middle ground between environmental conservation and the fishing rights of indigenous tribes, while ensuring continued water access for farmers. Ultimately, mounting protests and the hefty financial burden of federally mandated updates made the demolition the more cost-effective choice. Finally, in 2022, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission officially authorized the $450 million removal of four major dams, Copco 1 and 2, J.C. Boyle and Iron Gate dams. Through dam demolition, indigenous tribes expect a natural cleansing of warm water pools and algae buildup facilitated by the unimpeded flow of fresh water. Additionally, the reopening of natural fish breeding grounds could potentially increase salmon returns to the Klamath River Basin by up to 80% over the next three decades. This leads us to the question of how exactly these dams will be dismantled. The sheer scale of this removal endeavor rivals the monumental construction of the dams themselves. Never before have four dams of such magnitude been removed simultaneously, and it'll require meticulous planning and construction work to be done correctly. Looking into the demolition process itself, there are two primary methods for removing a dam, instantaneous and staged. Instantaneous removal is a rapid process, typically completed within hours or days. It begins with a reservoir drawdown, which involves releasing the water and accumulated sediment behind the dam downstream. Once the water is released, the dam itself is demolished using explosives, and the debris is cleared from the site. In contrast, staged removal occurs over an extended period, usually months or years. This method is used for taller dams with larger sediment buildups that could cause environmental harm if released too quickly. To manage this, rivers are diverted or pumped away from the construction site through tunnels or channels, providing better control during the reservoir drawdown and sediment release. After diverting the rivers and drying the basin, the dam is demolished using tools such as excavators or explosives. This more gradual staged method is employed for the Klamath Dam removals. The project entails removing an estimated 100,000 cubic yards of concrete, 1.3 million cubic yards of excavated soil, and 2,000 tons of demolished steel from the river. To facilitate water release, planners commenced with the removal of Copco 2 Dam in October 2023. Standing at a mere 25 feet tall, Copco 2 served as a diversion, channeling the river's flow into the larger Copco 1 and Iron Gate dams. The planners believe that by eliminating the diversion dam, the reservoir behind the dams will naturally drain before the commencement of demolition work on the other dams using explosives and heavy machinery. Water draining efforts have already commenced on the Iron Gate and J.C. Boyle dams, with engineers expressing confidence in the process's smooth execution. They believe that by draining the water first, the impact of harmful sediment flowing in the water will be minimized. Now dam removal itself is only part of the equation. Following the drawdown, a 2,200-acre footprint behind the dams will remain. That will be in need of restoration through the establishment of native vegetation and enhancement of habitat for the return of the salmon. The foremost consideration for planners was the restoration of the ecosystem, which had suffered due to the construction of the dams, submerging extensive tree-covered areas. Ecologists have meticulously gathered over 17 billion seeds and shrubs of native species for reforestation efforts. Simultaneously, workers are actively removing non-native plant species that have proliferated since the dam's construction, posing a threat to the revived ecosystem. 
As with any large-scale project, experts have forecasted both positive and negative outcomes for the Klamath River upon the removal of the dams. While dismantling the dams is likely to enhance water quality and facilitate the restoration of the damaged ecosystem, opponents argue that the reservoirs behind the dams hold significant importance for surrounding communities. These reservoirs provide clean and affordable energy, contribute to tax revenue, offer recreational opportunities, and strengthen waterfront property values, all of which could potentially be compromised once the dams are removed. Residents in the vicinity of the dams have overwhelmingly supported retaining them over the past decade due to the perceived benefits they offer, coupled with concerns that dam removal could lead to flooding. What's happening here on the Klamath River shows the power of both construction and deconstruction. Infrastructure has the ability to push technology forward and change the livelihood of millions of people. While it'll take years to see the effects of this dam removal, it's a powerful reminder of how this industry is constantly evolving and adapting as the world continues to develop. What are your thoughts on the world's largest dam demolition project? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.